Oh, hello. I'm live. Hi. So it's Katrina Kavanagh here. Welcome to Monday nights, 8 p.m. Starting a bit late because I had to get a cup of chamomile tea. Um, perfectly imperfect Q&A session for all of my lovely kindness on purpose families, parents and carers. It's Monday night here in Sydney, Australia at about 8.10 and I'm waiting for people to hop online. Tonight's topic, we're going to be talking about um, what happens to children and hello Samantha Zines, how are you going? Hope you've got your cup of tea. Hope you've got a cup of tea. I've got my cup of tea. It's chamomile, that's why I was running a bit late. Thought I'd jump in and have a quick shower as well. Just home, home later, had some from the office and had some tea. Um, and with my fam and then I am jumping online to do our Facebook live so hello hello um, tonight's topic is all about um, what do we do for our children and teenagers <laughs> yes I agree t t children and teenagers when they're experiencing nightmares or night terrors um, when they're just really all just afraid of the dark this is something that I relate to very much in my own life because I've always been a little bit not a big fan of the dark um, and to this day sleep with a light on I still sleep with the hall light on always have can't imagine ever not um, and so look I really relate to that because that's been my lived experience I also have my own children obviously who sometimes not so much Phoebe but Kate sometimes doesn't feel that great and and there's usually though only when she's triggered by something she's seen on online um, but also, you know, I have lots of clients over the years that I've worked with both adults and children and teenagers who really do struggle with the night time. So I want to specifically do a special Perfectly Imperfect Parenting Facebook Live. As we're just waiting for people to come on board, um, I want to um, also remind everyone, for those who will be watching later, or maybe on my YouTube channel, um, if you're wanting to be part of the Perfectly Imperfect Parenting online community then please go to my Facebook page at um, kindness on purpose um, or the website kindness on purpose.com and go straight to the parenting page and you'll see there a place where you can sign on and join with your email every month we'll be sending out um, we're sending out newsletters and those newsletters will be very straightforward they'll be um, with links to previous perfectly imperfect Parent, oh good, I'm still sit sitting next to my 11 year old's bed while he goes to sleep. Yes, Samantha Zanes, yes, yes, yes. And I think what I wanna do tonight is I want to take any sense of, I wanna normalize that experience. I wanna take any sense of shame out of the fact we're not meant to do this. And one of the things I really wanna do is um, take away the pressure that we put on parents that when I, when I look at, if you go online and look at how do I support my child to go to sleep, how do I support them to have, to um, not have night terrors, what you'll find is you'll find a whole lot of great suggestions, but you'll also find some things that I'm not totally in agreement with. And that's where it's all about we need to coach our kids to go to sleep on their own, blah, 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 in the dark with the door closed. I mean, don't get me started on that as if that's you know, so I wanted to talk about a few things about that coming from a neuro um, science perspective, but also coming from a real life experience of what happens to real people. Um, and just to my goal here tonight is to really alleviate the pressure that we put on ourselves to be perfect in parenting and make sure our kids go to bed at a certain time in a certain way, alone in their beds and that's how it's gotta be and the whole house is in darkness and everyone's meant to be comfortable with that. So um, I certainly wanna present that that's, um, there's a bit of room to move on that. Um, I'm gonna get started. I think at the moment, Sam, you're my only person, but I again, I have, I've gotta get back to promoting these. Um, and I expect that other people will join on the face, on the, um, what do you call it the the online the what do you call that the other thing oh youtube on the youtube you can tell i'm you know just doing this very um casually so i'm just playing around with my tea my beautiful tea and can i say look at my lovely t-shirt it says i'm actually in my pajamas it says kindness is cool and a gorgeous um some gorgeous dear friends gave that to me a couple of years ago and i just love it and wear it to death and love it for every every second it's a lovely night shirt um Okay, so I'm going to start talking about tonight's topic and that, that is how do we support our beautiful children to um, manage with nightmares and night terrors. And the first thing I'm going to say is, as I've already said, 
let's take the pressure off ourselves to, and, and I want to invite us all to have some perspective. I want you all to cast your minds forward in, in the future. Um, I want you to see your children as 49-year-old adults and think, hmm, will they be still wanting to sleep with me in my bed when they're 49? And for the little ones, will they still be having a dummy to go to sleep when they're 49? Uh, will they still need to X, Y, and Z, whatever it is they're wanting to do around sleep when they're 49? And the truth is, by then, they'll probably be a little bit older and um, have grown up and got some other strategies in place. Um, and so I think we sometimes need to lose, keep our perspective. And that's why I always say to my clients, well, you know what? When they're 49, and they're not going to be getting into bed with you, you know? Um, when they're 49, they're not going to be having a dummy. So let's get some perspective. <laughs> um, so I think that's the number one thing I talk about as far as being, being really, really mindful of, that we put this exorbitant amount of pressure on ourselves. The other thing is, let's talk about what the going to sleep process represents for children. Not only are they moving into a time when they're going to be very separate from pretend if they don't share a room and they're on their own, it's a time of separateness from their family, okay, from their mum or their dad or their carers um, and siblings, if they've got siblings. Um, if they're sharing a room, it's still a time of separateness from the older family members. Now, the truth of it is we're dealing with children and while some children might be really comfortable with um, going to sleep, it is normal to have children. It is understandable. There's nothing wrong with it to have children that might struggle a little bit with what this represents, going to bed at night. Um, so I always say to parents, well, okay, your child's actually resisting the idea of being away for you for a whole eight to ten, maybe even eight to ten hours. So that's good. It means that they've actually um, got a good connection with you and they want to be connected some kids who have anxiety, you know, I'll use that word very lightly, let's call it nervousness or holding worries, um, they might also experience that kind of discomfort about going to bed and going away from family and loved ones and support at that time. And what I would again say to you is let's just hold that in a, in a place of understanding that for them they're entering into separateness. Um, I was one of those parents who worked really hard to you know, help my babies go to sleep without me, um, and do. And if I had my time again, I would probably co-sleep, um, which is I know not everyone agrees with. But I worked once with a family where um, the mum had had children, and then they, she tragically lost those children. And I'm not going to talk about how, but I just want to think about the worst way you can lose your children. Um, she tragically lost those children, and then what happened was. Um, she found a new partner and they had, she had more children. And she said to me something that I'll never forget. She said to me that with these children, I'm going to be co-sleeping with these children because I had the other children and they went. She lost them. And I'll never again ever um, allow myself not to experience that closeness with my children. And so I thought she was a, she was a very wise woman and she was able to really reflect and I think, you know, when we put things in perspective, when we understand that we only have our children for a really short period of time, um, you know, and then they go off into the world and we have lots of grown-up time then, then I would just put to you that the idea of co-sleeping when they're younger um, isn't a bad big deal. The next thing, let's talk about the next step, and that is, you know, do we, do we sit with them to go to sleep or don't we? Again, I think it's a very individual case-by-case -case basis and, you know, it's about what works for you. But, again, if you're doing that for you, Samantha, and, and look, you know, just the other night I did that for my daughter as well, um, my, my youngest, um, because she was having a moment where she, a friend of hers had gone online and when they went through and, and looked up something um, and that upset her. It put some scary images in her mind and... You know, I really understand that and I just think, well, okay, for now, we just need to help her through that and that's what I'll do. I'll sit there with her. So that's something else you can do. You can sit there. I really encourage the use of light. Um, I don't believe that children need to go to sleep in complete darkness. I never have um, and I'm okay. Um, and so what I would say is that, um, what I would say about that is that at least to have a nightlight um, I've always had a personal preference for a hall light 
Um, and just the shining in of that extra glow has always been really, really nurturing and helpful to me. Um, and so we often, so even to this day, I sleep with a bit of a hall light on uh, or at least one other room at the moment. I think we have the bathroom light on. It just gives a bit of a glow at that end of the house. And so I can't see what the problem is with that. I mean, yeah, okay, there's electricity to do with that, but really does it actually matter? And um, I'm just, so I'm putting that out there and saying, a little night light, a hall light, whatever glow your child needs, then why not? Because if that's where they're going to need to feel comfortable, to be able to regulate their feelings and emotions, then I encourage that. The other really useful idea I will talk to you about is the use of visualizations and um, meditation. So I'll talk about meditation first. I cannot speak highly enough about um, getting on your phone something like a really good app. Um, I'm gonna show you a really good one. And that, app, one of the best apps out there at the moment, it's this app, if you can see, it's this app here called, oops, it's this app, I can't point properly here, which is called Insight Timer. It's that black one with a little, I've got a mirror image thing, black one with a little bowl. Um, but also this is great, the Headspace one is also great. And that's not Headspace the service, that's Headspace, a international platform. Um, and the other one I really like is, um, I don't know if you can see this one, but it's, here we can't, I'm trying to get my phone to be able to see it. Aha. Uh -huh. This one here, the mind check-in, it's called mindful check-in. The mindful check-in one is actually made by the Buddhist monks at the Nantian Temple down here in the Illawarra. The insight timer one, the black one with the bowl, is great because when you go on there, and I'm not, I'm not, um, I'm not being paid to endorse them. I just honestly find them to be really helpful because you can go in there and can actually select, you know, a guided meditation for your children, or there's various topics, and you can set the time frame as well. So I would be talking about using something like that to put on um, and, and have in the background as your children go to sleep. This does two things. One is it provides a beautiful sound and a story, you know, because they're talking about going in a magical place. You can also go online to um, a on iTunes. You can go to a CD called Healthy Little Hearts, and that's created by a girl called Katrina Kavanagh. Oops, that's me. Um, that's available internationally. Um, published by Blue Angel Publishing, so I have my own meditations there. And if you go onto Spotify and or your wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find also, um, or certainly I think it's definitely on Spotify, you'll find the Kindness on Purpose podcast. And one of those podcasts at the moment, I'm just getting that up and going, but one of those podcasts is actually another meditation for children by me. So I am a big believer in meditation for children. And these meditations are great because they take kids on an imaginative story and they can, and they're, they're all complimentary. I think the iTunes one with Happy Little Hearts is you pay for, but if you go to YouTube, YouTube you can not pay for it. So um, anyway, so it's, it's there and available. And um, what I would say to you is, Playing a meditation to help your child go off to sleep is a really, really nice idea and does two things. One is provides a nice story and sound to help soothe their senses, their hearing, um, and also it helps them slow down their brain and their body, which is really, really helpful as they are going off to sleep. So I can't encourage that enough. Another strategy I would like to support you to consider is one where you say to children who are feeling worried, you say to them things like, I'm coming back every 10 minutes. So, Sam, this might be something that's useful for you, for those of us who like to really give lots of support and have children who I think they'll need support. Um, it's to, once you're ready to start moving out of the room, is to say, I'm coming back in 10 minutes to check on you. And, of course, you make sure you do come back in 10 minutes. Have a meditation on while they're going off to sleep, a bit of a nightlight and I'm coming back in 10 minutes, and then I'm coming back in another 10. But can come back in, just check them, so I'm just checking, hope you're okay, and then go back out and then come back in, okay? So I want to really encourage you to consider those as practical strategies. The next thing is how do we talk to our kids about having nightmares and or night terrors, having fears about the dark, all of that kind of thing. I guess the thing I'd say to you, the best thing not to say includes don't be silly, there's nothing to be afraid of, blah, 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 blah. Um, of course, we want to reassure our children that 
you know, there is actually nothing to be afraid of. Um, but I think it's really important to say, look, it's really understandable you're feeling this way. That you know, the dark can feel a bit yucky. Um, we can like lots of people feel that way. But in the morning, when the sun's out, I want to talk to you about how you're feeling about going to sleep at night time and what are your worries about going to sleep and then you get a book and you write down what their worries are so it might be that I have a bad dream it might be um, there's a monster maybe hiding on my bed it might be I'm just scared of the dark and so what I encourage people to do is take those bits of information soothe and support your child to go to sleep that night and then in the light of day because you know yourself if you think about it we worry so much about we worry so much about um, so many things as adults in the middle of the night, and when we're worrying in the middle of the night, it can certainly feel worse, and um, it can certainly feel worse, kind of. So, what are we thinking about feels worse? So, what I'm encouraging people to do is actually go across, write down the worries of your child, or at least mentally note them, and then in the morning say and say to your child, "We're going to talk about this in the light of day because when the lights out, it." can feel better to talk about our worries so when then in the light of day sit down and that's the time not not the time before bed but in the light of day that is the time to talk about their worries and to problem solve how we can support them as they're going to sleep okay now it might be for example with my beautiful um, Kate um, what we ended up speaking about was the fear she had of the image that she's seen we unpacked that for her and Helped her to um, understand the practicalities of that's makeup. That's a you know that's a makeup. And it's gruesome makeup. It's really just a person. So to give them those, that reality checking is really helpful as well. It's good for them to look under the bed, look in their in their cupboard. It's good for them. This is the time if you're hearing noises at night to explain that. As my parent, my dad used to say to me, you know, the house is just settling. That's all that sound is, and that was really helpful. Um, and something my auntie, uh, Auntie Gwen, said to me once, which was really, really helpful, was she said to me, you know, Katrina, um, please remember that every morning you wake up and you're safe and you're okay. And so for all, and she added, I think, another idea, I can't remember whether she did this or I thought of it, we can add up all the number of nights that that person slept. So if they're 10, it's 10 times 365 um, nights that they've slept and woken up the next day and been safe. What I'm saying not, you know, poo poo their fears or to put them down for having those fears because those fears are normal. Nighttime can be a really tricky time for children and teenagers and also adult, um, also all of us as adults as well. So to be kind. The other thing I'd say is that when you've got teenagers, we know that the hormone change, changes come, the brain developments, um, you know, brain is developing at a rapid speed. And what that can mean is for kids who have actually slept really well, they can experience uh, sleeplessness and inability to get to sleep. And then, of course, hormonally at the, at the end in the morning, it's such a hard, harder effort to get up. Um, and that's something I'm seeing with my Phoebe is that she was always a good sleeper, always slept about 10 or 11 hours, and she'd always get up early, so she'd go to bed early and sleep. What I'm finding as she's getting older is she's literally finding it hard to go to sleep, which is really different. And then she's wanting to sleep in. And I know that that's developmentally appropriate. So again, we explain to our teenagers, this is what happens. The brains are developing. Your hormones are flooding through. You're having more trouble getting to sleep. This is developmentally what's going on. Um, and so, you know, this is where you can start coaching your adolescent children to start using really good sleep hygiene. You know, let's get off our devices 15 to 20 minutes to half an hour before, ideally more, but let's go minimum. Uh, before going to bed. Let's get a cup of chamomile tea or something that's very soothing that is nice for you or a nice warm water or something like that. Let's sip away. Let's get some nice proper aromatherapy essential oils like lavender to you know, infuse in the room or dab on yourself just to bring that sense of relaxation. Again, for your teenagers, let's use meditation and relaxation exercises. I would encourage them to even write a journal you know if they've got worries before they get, go to bed write all those worries down and journal them beforehand um so there there's some some ideas to help look after our kids and our teenagers around the area of sleep sleep nightmares and terrors just remember nightmares do happen to all of us 
it's our brain's way of processing what's going on in the day and so we will have dreams sometimes things that are scary when that happens we want to reassure our kids as soon as possible and get them back to feeling safe and normal what I would encourage you to do is never to get angry at your kids for not sleeping well and needing you during the night time that's hard remember we have an ideal of how we are as parents we have the reality and some days those two things are closer than others and for me what I find is I have human moments sometimes where I get a bit cranky you know oh my girls I need to go to sleep just go to sleep um, but then I other days I do it better so whenever I have those days I'm a little bit gentle with myself um, you are on the right track Samantha Zanes of course you are thank you so much for being here um, and so you know it's just just to be kind and gentle to yourself as you're parenting your kids through this we're going to do it really well some days and we're going to be not so great the other days and that's understandable your role modeling to your children that they don't have to be perfect as parents and that is gold that is gold so I'm going to leave it there thank you so much Samantha for being here you've created a lovely audience for me tonight and what I'll do now is I'll be also posting this on uh, on a Facebook um, on the Fa kind of some purpose YouTube channel as a reference that people can look at um, over time I'll be sending the link out to the schools as well I seriously need to promote them though don't I to get some more people involved but I'll do that in time as soon as time permits but thank you very much I hope you all have a wonderful wonderful um, evening and for those who've enjoyed and being here thank you very much for joining us on our perfectly imperfect Facebook live Q&A for parents and carers bye bye